your neighbor and say, neighbor, if you don't hook up with me, I can still get rid of a thousand. Come on, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. I'm preparing for my takeover. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here's the next faith point. Prepare for a courageous response. Prepare for a courageous response. Look at verse number six. It says, be strong and of a good courage. For to this people, you shall, watch this, divide an inheritance, the land which I swore to their fathers to give to them. Now, this particular scripture, it, it, it struck me when I heard it. Now, God gave the land to Israel. But God is not telling Israel that they need to be strong. That they need to be full of courage. God was telling Joshua that you need to have the courage. Come on, somebody. That you need to be strong. Come on here. Why? Because Joshua was getting ready to lead them into their inheritance. And sometimes God is trying to tell me to tell you that God is going to put you in charge of some things. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. God is going to make you a leader. And it's not about your staff. It's not about the people in your business. It's not about the people on your team. God is trying to get you to understand is that I put you in charge. I made you the leader and I want you to be courageous. I want you to respond strong. Come on, somebody. I don't want you to be afraid of the devil. Y'all ain't hear me. Because as long as you got faith, as long as you know that I'm on your side, you can take any people anywhere. Come on, somebody. Look at your name and say, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. So how am I going to get there? Because I'm preparing for a courageous response. Sometime, watch this. Notice in the Bible, Jesus, even in the New Testament, Jesus was always telling the disciples, be not afraid. Come on here. He, you know, they were in the ship and he shows up. He said, be not afraid. You know, whatever he was getting ready to do, he always told them, don't be afraid. When you look at the New Testament or the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, you find that throughout the Bible, you always see the word, don't be afraid, be of good courage. Why? Because, because in the spirit realm, the enemy only has one thing that can affect you, and that's fear. Y'all ain't saying mm. See, See, the enemy knows if you can just be afraid. Oh, 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 I wish I had a witness here. He understands if I can just get you to be scared about something, if I can get you to be afraid to step out on faith, if I can just get you afraid not to go and look for the new apartment, if I can just get you to be afraid not to go look for the new job. Sometimes we talk about, no, I'm not going to get that new job. I'm not going to get that new car. I'm not going to get that new house. I can't do it. I can't afford it. Come on, somebody. The enemy wants you to be afraid in his life. As long as you are afraid, you'll never have it. God was saying, Joshua, you're going to get to the point in the land where when you get there and you almost cross over, you're going to meet demons and devils that you never saw before. Come on here. The worst, the worst that the devil has to bring to your life it's not going to happen at the beginning of the journey. Come on here. And, and, and some of y'all, if you think that the devil has sent his best to you to keep you from getting your blessings in 2012, watch and see what he do over the next 30 days. Come on, somebody. Because the devil wants you to go into 2014 be, being discouraged that you didn't get your blessing in 2013. But see, what you got to do when the devil shows up, you got to tell the devil, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You got to tell the devil, if God be for me, he's better than the world against me. Come on, somebody. You got to tell the devil, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got to face the devil. You got to face the enemy. You got to face the distractors. Come on, somebody. And remember this. You can never win anything without an opponent on the other side.
Come on here. And you never know, watch this, you never know when victory is going to show up. Oh, y'all, y'all too quiet. I wish I had some sports fans here. I was, I was with, with, with my southern boys, and I was watching Alabama-Auburn yesterday. And it was one play left in the game. One second left on the clock. And for all intents and purposes, the game was going to go into overtime. But all Auburn needed was one play, one situation. Out of the blue, all of a sudden, one play allowed them to win the game. Look at your neighbor and say, all I need is one play. Yeah. All you need is just one second left on the clock. As long as there's a second left on the clock, anything can happen. Knock the number one team right out the box. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, it ain't over till God says it's over. Next faith point. You got to prepare for a season of obedience. A season of obedience. Look at verse number seven. Only be strong and very courageous. Sometimes you got to go from being of a good courage to being very courageous. That you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. What was God telling a, a, a Joshua is that your prosperity, uh, praise God, is going to come from your obedience. Come on, come on. It's going to come from your obedience. There are times when you're going to have to obey God even though you don't want to obey God. There are things that you're going to have to do in order to get your blessing even though you don't feel like doing it. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. There are some things that you're going to have to sacrifice even though you don't want to sacrifice it. Hello? Because you know that anything that's worth having is always going to cost you something. Come on here. It's always going to uh, put you to a level where God wants you to be obedient to what God is saying. There are some people that I said earlier, God is going to specifically tell you, you, need, you know, you need to get away from that person. Hello? You need to give that thing up. You need to give that situation up. Come on, somebody. I wish I had somebody in the church this morning. So I have to be obedient. Obedient. Somebody say obedient. Yeah, obedient. And, I, and guess what? I, I, and notice seasons of obedience. In other words, I just, I have to be obedient because God told me to be obedient. I have to follow God's commandment because the word tells me to follow God's commandment. And the Bible said, if I'm obedient to the word, I'll have that I may prosper wherever I go. You cannot have prosperity without obedience. Sometimes, sometimes people wonder why they're not prospering. I want to ask you, how is your level of obedience? Are you obedient to God? Are you obedient to the church? Are you obedient to leadership? Come on, somebody. Are you faithful to your giving? Are you faithful to your commitment to the church? Are you faithful to the whole things that God wants you to do? All of that comes under the category of obedience. Let me close this message out. Last thing, prepare for success through the word. Prepare for success through the word. Verse number eight said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. God was telling Joshua that success Without the word is an impossibility. You cannot have set success absent from the word of God. He said you are to meditate in the word day and night. 
You cannot pick up the word when you come to church on Sunday. Hello? You have to have God's word in your heart, in your spirit, in some form, whether you're actually reading scripture, uh, or whether you're watching uh, uh, Christian television, whether you're listening to Christian radio, come on somebody, because we have to counter everything that comes into our spirit during the week. Come on here. All of us are a part of the world, and, and we are subject to the world. And whatever the world offers us, we are just like sponges. We, we will absorb, y'all not hearing me, we, we will absorb what the world gives us. And that's why you have to counter your flesh. You have to counter the ways of the world. Because you know as well as I do, it's easy to find yourself in a place where God doesn't want you to be. That's why every chance we get, we got to get a word from God. Because it is only through the word of God that's going to strengthen us. It is only through the word of God that will keep us holy and keep us righteous. So God told Joshua, you take this people over the promised land and take them into the territory that I've given them. But he says, you have to prepare for the takeover. The takeover cannot take place unless you prepare for it. They couldn't get into the city or into the land until Joshua did those seven or eight things. He said, if you do these things, you'll make it. If you do these things, you'll take the land. Last thing I want to say to you, and then I'm going to open up the altar. Some things God has for you, you have to look at it not in light of what God has for somebody else. So in other words, you cannot compare your life to the sister that's sitting next to you. You, you cannot judge what you're supposed to do depending on somebody else. Because when we view what other people do, we don't know what kind of relationship, what kind of contract God has with that person. The only contract you know about is the one that you have with God. And that's why you have to become sensitive to what God is speaking to you. Because you cannot take over the land if you're not hearing what God wants for you. So I came this morning to give you this word about preparations for the takeover. How many of you want to take over the land? How many of you want to take over what God has for you? If, if that's you, I want you to come to this altar. Come on. Come on. If that's you, come on. Come on. I want you to come to this altar. You, you, want, you, want, you want to get 